Okay, I'm back to reading The Portable Atheist. Looking forward to uh, finishing this book off. It's uh, about twice as long as it needs to be, in my opinion, but uh, ah, there you go. Uh, we're getting to some modern authors, and I'm actually looking forward to to uh, modern authors. They're more diverse of, uh, of subject matter, and uh, you can actually find recordings of these guys on the internet. And so now I'm reading Bertrand Russell, of course, uh, uh, famous philosopher, mathematician, controversial figure, godless atheist, you know, that sort of thing. But he wrote this essay in 1943 called An Outline of Intellectual Rubbish. And it's basically just a compendium of strange, peculiar conundrums in the, uh, in the religious beliefs that are held by faith or frankly uh, are ignored that Bertrand Russell just finds illogical. They don't make any sense. And uh, he calls them intellectual rubbish. And since it's just a compendium, there's no real central theme, except at the end where he seems to tie it up with the basic concept of skepticism in general. But he, uh, he just breaks it off into different paragraphs of, of different uh, irrationalities. And it's told in a, in a pretty witty manner. Uh, nothing that I would call laugh out loud funny, but it's told with a dry wit that that uh that keeps the the narrative flowing it's actually very very interesting so you can just pick out a, a section at random and begin reading because it's just it's just a list of of different irrationalities intellectual rubbish so uh, let's see if i can find something interesting here uh, to give an example oh gosh i had something here about Sin, sectioned off here. Uh, I can't find it all of a sudden. Well, at any rate, he talks about... Oh, gosh. See, this is what happens when you don't edit your videos, which I don't do. I just turn it on and rattle on, and if there are... Uh, if there's something I can't find, so be it. Okay, here it is. Okay, we're talking about uh, the concept of sin. There are logical difficulties in the notion of sin. We are told that sin consists in disobedience to God's commands. But we are also told that God is omnipotent. If he is, nothing contrary to his will can occur. Therefore, when the sinner disobeys his commands, he must have intended this to happen. St. Augustine boldly accepts this view and asserts that men are led to sin by a blindness with which God afflicts them. But most theologians in modern times have felt that, if God causes men to sin, it is not fair to send them to hell for what they cannot help. We are told that sin consists in acting contrary to God's will. This, however, does not get rid of the difficulty. Those who, like Spinoza, take God's omnipotence seriously, deduce that there can be no such thing as sin. This leads to frightful results. What, said Spinoza's contemporaries, was it not wicked of Nero to murder his mother? Was it not wicked of Adam to eat the apple? Is one action just as good as another? Spinoza wriggles, but does not find any satisfactory answer. If everything happens in accordance with God's will, God must have wanted Nero to murder his mother. Therefore, since God is good, Murder must have been a good thing. From this argument, there is no escape. So you see how it's written. He just shows these, these strange conundrums, these strange contradictions that are held in religious beliefs. And when, when I was uh, a religious believer, <clears throat> I, I held a similar strange belief uh, as I just read in this paragraph here. And that is, I, I, I sometimes wondered about good old Judas Iscariot. You know, he, he betrayed Jesus, turned him into the authorities for 40 pieces of silver. And as a result, Jesus uh, was crucified. 
and also atoned for the sins of the world, and forever after Judas Iscariot is demonized by the world, right? And in Revelation, he's cast into the lake of fire, even. And I remember thinking, now wait a minute. If the will of God was to send Jesus to the cross to atone for the sins of mankind, uh, and he used the mechanism of betrayal by Judas to accomplish this, why is Judas Iscariot a bad guy? He was just doing God's will, wasn't he? Uh, you can say it's uh, his own free will, but ultimately it was the will of God. And if he wasn't turned in, uh, the whole uh, atonement would have been would have not occurred on the specified day that it was supposed to happen. Um, what gives? Well, uh, to this, frankly, I just kind of swept it under the rug and didn't think about it. Uh, there's lots of things I didn't want to think about when I was religious. Um, I just didn't want to think about it. You know, I remember uh, reading the Bible to my wife, and I distinctly remember, frankly, I, I intentionally skipped over parts because I knew they were embarrassing. And you know, when that happened, I, I knew I was in trouble. Intellectual rubbish. Got to avoid it. You have to, to face it. And if it's in your life, you got to remove it. That's Bertrand Russell's whole point. So he goes on at the end of his article to talk about skepticism in general. You know, what are some tips to follow in order to, to filter out intellectual rubbish, to lead a skeptical life? Well, he has several bits of advice. Uh, let's see. talks about, oh, this is a rather long article, but he talks about a few simple rules that, we, that will keep you not from all error, but from silly error. And uh, let's see, whenever you find yourself getting angry about a difference of opinion, be on your guard. You will probably find on examination that your belief is going beyond what the evidence warrants. In other words, don't be emotional. If you've got an argument that you can't justify, uh, and you can only justify it by being emotional, it's probably uh, not worth holding. Seek out people with whom you disagree, and read a newspaper belonging to a party that is not yours. And I think that's a good idea. You don't want to be comfortable just reading things that you know you're going to agree with. Find differences of opinion. Uh, they may argue you out of the current opinion that you do hold. I find that true all the time. Um, let's see what else. Be wary of opinions that flatter your self-esteem. <laughs> opinions that, um, that are, are predisposed to agree with what you already agree with. Uh, until you have admitted your own fears to yourself, and have guarded yourself by a difficult effort of will against their myth-making power, you cannot hope to think truly about many matters of great importance. To conquer fear is the beginning of wisdom. I, I really like that. You can't be afraid. Um, you can't be afraid of letting go of what you know deep down is unjustifiable or uh, intellectual rubbish or irrational. If you want to be superstitious, which I don't want to be, then that's the way to go. Okay, I think my 10 minutes is up, but uh, good old Bertrand Russell here. Uh, always more to learn. Okay, take care.